I played the game and I'm still the same and I never changed just to get a deal, but I'm balling. I came from nothing and something like it's the nothing. The Push to Shove podcast. Holy fucking Damn. shit. Damn. It's been a while. Bro, this is like when stars align. This is how what I feel. This shit's been on my mind for like a year. Yeah. And I've been listening to podcasts for like three and a half, four years. Wow. And every year I've just gone exponentially smarter. You know, the, um, the products that I'm buying off these podcasts, the programs, the long form conversations yeah. that I've been listening to, you know, two crazy smart people. One's a doctor, one's a scientist, one's an astrophysicist, one's a comedian, mm. one's a CrossFit Games athlete, one's a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. Like, Crazy. they are giving their knowledge to us, brother. Every day. For yeah. free. Knowledge is free, that's it. I would pay for it, but oh. no, they're giving it to us for free. For free. So wow. thank you. And now, <laughs> and now, do we fucking dare do, do this? Do fucking dare? Do you dare do this? Oh, I dare. I dare you. I, I dare, right? <laughs> but to, to tell you guys a bit of a story, I dare do most things. But to get this done, it literally, like, there's no way I can do it myself. There's no way. I don't have, um, I need something, I need a back and forth, you know? Yeah. I need, like, not the same energy, yeah. but I need the opposing and complementary energy, yeah. like the yin to the yang yeah. sort of thing, right? I feel you. And... When I first met you, um, you were doing work for um, No Bail Co. No Bail. No Bail. No Bail. Hell yeah. yeah. Never bail from that lift. <laughs> Don't fuck yeah, around. Albert, you know who you are. Albert Richardson. Sick Albert the Penguin. The Beast. Where the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> the Hustler. How dare you. <laughs> so, you were doing work for him. Yeah. You rocked up late as usual. As usual. As usual. Today I did rock up late, yeah. And straight away. I was standing there talking to you, yeah. like just like two females talking about freaking handbags and shit. <laughs> but <laughs> but we were talking about tech. video equipment. Yeah, video equipment tech. Yeah. Right, because I fuck around a bit with videos. Yeah. <clears throat> but not to the extent you do. Yeah. Right. I love this shit. I love like what I can create mm. and what I can show off. You know, all the good work people do. But after I saw you do what you do, yeah. I was like, you know what, Damn. I need to work with this guy <laughs> in some way, shape or form. Yeah, that's it. I didn't want to push it, yeah. you know, because you're doing stuff with Albert and I'm like, you know what, just like a, just like a hot date, mm -hmm. just let things let naturally it, happen. Let it naturally happen, that's right? it. Right? That's it. And you might like let it slip and that opportunity is gone. Yeah. But holy fucking shit, yeah. did the stars align? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Huh? That's it. Um, here we are now, like, what is it? 21st of September. Yeah. And I've, what, I've met you like two months ago? Yeah. Insane. Wow, just let it actually happen and, you know. But in the last two days, Yeah. the amount of work that we've done. Oh, it's crazy. It's pretty crazy, right? It's pretty crazy. Like, yeah. why don't you tell people your background and sort of, um, you know, what industry you came from. Yeah, absolutely. So, for the people that don't know me, um, my name is Jeremiah, but uh, I go by J Cray, or just people call me J in short, or Jerry, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, I, a little bit about me is that I am a videographer um, and also a photographer. A um, majority of my work is actually photography, but I do have a much bigger passion for videography. And it's for me, it's much more of a challenge than photography, but I am based out in Campbelltown. Um, but the past year, I have been working across and outside of Campbelltown. Um, but majority of my work now is sort of based in Liverpool um, alongside uh, Canley Heights Fitness Studio, um, which I'm excited to create content for. So the past couple of days, I have been shooting an insane amount of videos. Um, You're a beast. I'm a, I'm a beast. A beast. <laughs> uh, but yeah. You don't stop. 
Yeah. Well, I'm going to give a quick shout out to the Ice Long Blacks that are being supplied by Fitness Studio. So, you know, if you want something really addictive but not enough sweets in it, definitely try the Ice Long Black. Ice Long Black <laughs> or Americano, I think, is the official Americano, name for it. Americano, yeah. You get them from Starbucks, eh? Yep, that's yeah, right. Starbucks, yeah. And what it is is basically a long black, but it's a cold yeah, long yeah, black. Yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. And for some reason, that makes the coffee taste so much better. So much better. And because you're not putting freaking pesticide hormone yep. filled um, <laughs> my bad my bad my bad so note to self <laughs> disconnect disconnect we're gonna, that, we're gonna keep that rolling in the podcast though. disconnect the um the yeah. the phone yeah, to the internet, laptop yeah. yeah yeah so you're not drinking hormone filled milk oh yeah, yeah. you're not drinking because milk's there's a lot of sugar in milk as well yeah right so you're getting just water mm-hmm. and the coffee shot. And the coffee shot, yeah. So I like it. Oh, it's really nice. Yeah. It actually like it actually cleanses your liver. Oh, there you go. There's um by Ben Greenfield. There's a podcast called um I think it was Fifty Six Coffees a Day. Fifty Six Coffees. Yeah. There's a there's an there's a liver or kidney transplant doctor. Yeah. Wow. And he goes and after every single transplant, yeah. he gives the patient a survey, mm. right? And the survivors, the guys that are the ones that he, he, he correlated that the people that die yeah. from, say, drinking a bottle of scotch a day yeah. to the people that can just drink a, scotch, a bottle of scotch a day and live, yeah. the correlation is coffee. Coffee, right. So somehow that has a crazy effect on cleansing your body. Right, I see. So I, see. I don't do it. I don't take this to wake up. I yeah. take this because I like the taste. I like the taste, right? And to cleanse my body. To cleanse your body. There you go. Um, so if you guys need a way to cleanse your body, definitely suss out the ice long blacks here that we provide at Fitness Studio. <laughs> um, but yeah, just going off what uh, uh, Alan said, I do train as well. Um, not regularly. Oh, well, re- regularly I say like three, four times a week. Um, in my home, uh, well, not in my home, but like in my my area. Um, but yeah, I when I do go to fitness studio though, I do like to train upstairs, um, where the primal fitness section is, and it's a great place to train um, if you want to learn about function um, and just be able to smooth your entire body in general. They have amazing coaches here, so definitely suss, suss it out. Um, but yeah, also uh, majority of my work is photography, and a lot of the models that I work with they prefer photography rather than videography. Uh, but I did present that option as well. Um, if they'd like um but yeah here i am now with fitness studio uh, with alan and we're doing some content for you guys um but today's topics uh what are the topics today alan you are oh, me it's just me you oh, are the fucking topic how dare you we i want to get to know you yeah because we are building this podcast yeah and Which I'm so for. i am very excited about it it's crazy like how yeah. the like seriously Jeremiah is correct. Like, who are we? How dare I? <laughs> because the people that I listen to, I refer to them. Because whenever my mother or my wife asks me, "Are you listening to to that shit again?" Yeah. I say yes. I'm listening to my gods. <laughs> that's what. That's how they refer yeah. my podcast. Yeah. They go, oh, "Are you listening to God again?" Yeah. And I'm like, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Because they are the modern day gods. Yeah. They are the people that are leading the way. They're the ones that are paving the way. Yeah. They are. And if we listen to our gods they you will become a better person you will be put onto the right you know like programs and the right products and the cutting edge of whatever fitness technology you know um you know whatever you're after it's out there you just gotta like that's it know you know where to get this information from and there's nothing there's nothing more fast and to the point than podcasting yeah. topics about me i don't know about the topics about me that's <laughs> well don't worry yeah i'm really just scared i'm a bit scared guys so uh don't worry bear, bear with me fear is good fear is good pain yeah. is good pain it is good pain is your friend you, it makes you know you're alive um so yeah. if you guys don't know um there's some like really good podcasts or where to start from 
Apparently SoundCloud, there's a whole bunch of podcasts. Yeah, there's, is that yeah, true? Yeah, there's a lot of sound. Um, I get all mine from the podcast app if you're yeah. an Apple user. Yeah. I don't know if there's an app on Android. Uh, there should be. If there is on iPhone, it would there be. There should a, be a podcast yeah, app, right? There would be. But um, my favorite podcasts are every bloke listens to Joe Rogan podcast. Joe. <laughs> um, yeah. And the guests that he gets on will put you onto a lot of yeah. great podcasts yeah. as well. No, I agree. So that's the JRE, the Joe Rogan Experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam Harris. Sam Harris. Oh, if Harris. you haven't sussed that, suss that out, the um, the Waking Up podcast. Mm -hmm. So everything from meditation to philosophy yeah. to politics. Yeah. Like he is a pretty much unbiased mm. guy that will he's really raw as well isn't he super raw, super raw like yeah. he yeah. does not he'll ask all the hard questions he won't let people fuck around yeah and he'll basically try and get to the bottom of exactly whatever the yeah. subject is yeah. so i've like literally everything that i've learned about religion and the problems that are happening in the world are from the sam harris That's podcast not from news not from newspapers, <laughs> not from watching TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from yeah. that podcast. Right, right, right. I listened to the, in Australia, the Mind Muscle Project. Mind Muscle Project, All yeah. All right, shout out to Lachlan and Raf. Yeah, shout out to those boys. They used to be actually my coach out at CrossFit um, Creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys are killing it. Wow. They're doing some awesome work. Wow. Like, they are paving the way yeah. in terms of, like, what um, is possible. Right, right. right. Like, to give you an idea, these guys have like three gyms mm. they have a chocolate company yeah they've just released like this training journal right on kickstarter right. they've got australia's number one fitness podcast wow. and um i'm gonna get them on here actually <laughs> i think we should get them on here yo boys like come through <laughs> they have to we have to somehow tackle them and um, yeah you know even if we have to go to them yeah uh what, whereabouts are the locations are they whereabouts are they, they do it out of their gym just like us oh yeah there you go and the gym that um I run is fitness studio yeah and we're like we're basically in our um yeah. in our studio here right awesome so the mind muscle project i listen to the jocko podcast jocko yeah is that, is that comedy or no this is like in america the the number one sas trainer he was the commander of an sas oh, unit yeah, 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 and he yeah. became like this super high level elite um management consultant like yeah. group leader thinker yeah um influencer wow. like massive company corporations hire him mm -hmm. to teach their leaders how to lead properly wow so okay. his podcast is crazy yeah. powerful what was it called again the jocko j-o-c-k-o podcast Definitely yeah that out. like to give you an idea this guy's instagram he wakes up at like four o'clock and he just he literally he'll post a picture of the time so it'd be like 4 30 and just yeah. a bar with a whole bunch of plates on it wow so that's what he's doing at four wow. o'clock in the morning insane definitely uh, seizing the day in that one i've got heaps more but yeah enough about me well, that's your top one day yeah yeah enough about ellen let's enough find about. out about the j to the, the j to the craig so first of all yeah can you tell us, do you want to start with your story till now or do you want to go into your story about no, industry? Go, oh, industry. Oh, I'm happy to go from the start if you like. Go from the start. Go from the start. That way like people get on, on like an idea of like yeah. how I started. Yeah. Like how did you, who, what made you become who you are? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, how I started with my journey with photography and videography um it was roughly i would say six years ago when i picked up my first dslr camera um yeah well not in the industry but when i picked up my first camera so um just to paint a picture for you guys so when i picked up my camera i was really interested in photography like this was me like leaving high school and then understanding cool i want to do something really artsy and as a hobby so i got into photography and then I got into um, uh, car photography. So I just shot a bit of cars. Found it pretty interesting because each car is a different color. So that's when I started playing around with colors and just understanding different um, like protocols you would go to to editing a photo. Um, but at the time, I never knew about Lightroom or Photoshop. Never knew any programs. I just decided to just edit stuff on my phone. Six years ago, what was available? 
uh, six years ago. Oh, th- so they were available like, in uh, Photoshop. I just didn't have it because I didn't know about it. So, what I would do is I would just have um, like the program. I'm not sure what Canon program it was, but it was given to me by on a CD. So, I would just use that program and just play around with the settings. Um, and then after that, uh, you know, I did photography, but a, f- a few parties here and there, a few events, and I enjoyed it. It was it was good, Me- collaborating with people, meeting with people. Um, then I got into club photography. So, this was like a whole new level of like demographic in terms of people. So, you know, you have people that obviously like, you know, party a lot and, you know, put themselves in a position to damage your equipment. <laughs> and I remember my first gig I did, um, I had a flash on top of my camera and a, a, a lady spilled her drink on my flash. So, I was taking my... S- yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite hefty in the price, but um, oh, at the time I had a Canon one, so it was like 300, 400, something like that. But um, yeah, it was damaged, and then the rest of the night I couldn't shoot. Like I had to use the in in body flash thing that flips up, yeah, so that was like pretty annoying. And I was got I got called an amateur. I'm like, oh, this guy's noob. I'm like, yeah, I was, well, I can't do anything. The lady spilled her drink on my flash. What am I supposed to do? So that happened, and then um, I got over it because you know there wasn't really that big of an appreciation value. And I understand it's club photography; like you just take a few photos and then you just put it up on their Facebook. Um, but at the time, Instagram wasn't big at the time, so mm-hmm. Facebook was where it's at. Right. And then uh, a couple of years later, after that, I got into videography because I started doing a few prank videos, um, which I don't have online, by the way. Prank videos where you just like troll someone and just scare them, scare them. like from, like I used to scare my mate a lot. Every time he came out of the shower, I just like scare him, like rah, and, and he would just freak. Yeah, get on, get a reaction. Related. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, <laughs> that's what I was realizing. I'm like, oh man, videos is pretty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nah, videos is. I said, oh, videos is pretty fun. So I just sussed out more videos, and then um, I got into a few brands as well that just you know test test shoots. Um, but yeah, I. After doing like working with a specific brand for X amount of months, um, all free by the way, um, you know I really wanted to put myself out there and learn. Like I wanted to see what I could take at the next level. And then when I got into videography, um, oh, so as I got into videography and learned out learned about it as the months gone by, I realized that equipment is you know important. Um, at the time, four years ago, I would bash on 4K a lot because I I felt like it wasn't necessary. It still is necessary now. Like people can still tell the difference. But for me, um, all the years that I've gone by, I you know wish I did have 4K camera. But um, yeah, the quality is always gonna you know rise as the years go. I'm not into 4K, but when I do, I will see what you know what is the next level because I have shot with a 4K camera and I enjoyed it. It's just the editing pro- process takes long uh, longer. It just takes longer because you guys still gotta um, put that big ass files on that on that you know timeline on your right, web program you're using right. so your ability to handle yeah the the like amount you don't, of data is, yeah it changes like, like for yeah. me if you don't have an h if you don't have a, a solid state drive or an ssd they call um you will suffer with time and time is money like you if you don't for and also if you do a same day edit and you don't have the goods on time you're screwed honestly but um but yeah so uh, like i said when i worked with this brand for about six months i just stuck with 1080p grew from it and then um I worked with other multiple brands, all being activewear or streetwear brands. And then the most, um, I said I would say most influential one and really impacting one was Nobel, um, only because the, the owner was just as hungry as, more hungry than every other owner that I've um, worked with. And that was insane. Um, so, you know, he would he would do a lot of things for me, Albert. So. You, know what, you know what he's good at? Yeah. He's good at working with good people. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I've noticed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've noticed that his crew, the people that yeah. he keeps around him, yeah. They're all no, like, agree. they're all like, they're there for him, you know? I agree, yeah, no, that's it. Like, when I... When, when I, I jumped on board with No Bail, that was probably the most insane one because it allowed me to um, push boundaries that I've never pushed boundaries before. And, like, it actually allowed me to collaborate with people more because every photographer and videographer would know that it's def- definitely hard to put yourself on the map without looking the part or being eloquent in, in a sense. Because I know I've worked with, I've collabed with a lot of photographers and videographers but they don't really have the um, charisma, you know what I mean? Because they're just silent shooters. Like, mm. But when you compare someone who has the creative eye, also the charisma, he's pretty much the person you'd want on your team. I'm not saying I have that. I'm not saying I'm the best at that, but I do like to side with my models a lot, which makes me able to direct them more. So as a director and like, <laughs> like the videographer, it makes my life easier because you just envision the shot. You're like you're not going to do a 180 kilogram deadlift and not do a warm up. The same thing with the shooter. You're not going to pre-plan. You're not going to go into in, into you know your film straight away. You got to pre-plan it to get the best, and that's how I kind of like you know stood out 
I would say stood out from the rest because I pick my song beforehand, I envision it, I put my earphones on and just like imagine myself in the scene yeah. and just like really put myself in the audience perspective and say, hey, yeah. wow, I feel so immersed. Immersion is big as well because now the now, now majority of edits, the trend right now is sound effects and you know, visually you have a good, you know, scene, but if audibly it sounds like crap, <laughs> there really is no point in, you know, having a film. And there's so many factors into thinking uh, into into like creating a film. Because if you do solo shooting, there's a lot more you have to juggle. And for me, that's a challenge and I love that challenge. So like I said, when I stepped in with No Bail, there was already ideas flowing with my head because as soon as I saw the models' faces, the locations, I was already imagining myself in that scene. And it makes editing a lot easier mm. in a sense. So mm. after No Bail, um, uh, just, you know, we're, I wanted to venture out into something else. Um, so I just took a break real quick. And then uh, Alan here hit me up. Um, and here I am now with Fitness Studio. You created, you created um, a couple of videos. Yeah. And you didn't release them, or Alba didn't release them until like a month yeah. or so later. Yeah. But you know, my intention was always I was going to make my own videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can. Yeah. Yeah, you you were capable. And I told you from day one, like you, with the gear you have, you're going to be big in like yeah. a couple months time. But when I saw what you've put into your videos yeah i was like you know what this guy needs to come and like create content for us <laughs> yeah. yeah and i was happy to i was happy to jump on board like there was like you got to link that um the madeline video oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah into sure. the um show notes because just the color the transitions yeah the special effect there's a transition into an eye <laughs> yeah. with like stuff happening inside the eye and yeah, i was yeah. like get it's the like... fuck out of here that's yeah. I can't even touch that. Like, <laughs> you know, I just, I was just yeah. like, he needs to come and work with yeah. us no, no, straight up. I'm very happy to be here. But, um, but after that, like, yeah, here I am now at Fitness Studio. Um, we have a lot of videos lined up that I've got, you know, I've been editing a day in, day out. Yeah. So very excited to release that. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about what's, from a timeline perspective, what's been happening with me for the past uh, X amount of years. But yeah, you no, know, like I've, I've, because I've stepped away from that relationship and, you know, the friends that I thought they were friends, you know, I thought they were actually, you know, good friends that had my back. They didn't have, they didn't have my back. Honestly, they didn't have my back. And, you know, when I was, when I stepped away from that crowd and decided to do my things, things my way, that's when other influences and uh, different people wanted to, you know, step into my world. And for me to purposely block that out was probably the hardest thing because blocking that pathway blocks that pathway forever unless you want to rekindle that pathway. But in doing so, it allowed other opportunities to come across my way and tell me, look, here's, here's an opportunity for you. Let's pursue it. Let's go further. That's why I'm always willing to help people when it comes to like media branding or like um, social influence, like something like Instagram related. You know, I'm willing to help them if they give me their 110% as well because I've worked with brands that don't even give 110% back to you. Oh, believe me, I've hired people, <laughs> companies yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. were supposed to take care of the whole thing. Really? Like... 3k a month insane that was yep. the budget wow wow 3K a month insane that's not including the advertising budget no and what i got were like stock photos they never even came out to take photos wow. um there was literally like one meeting at the right at the start yeah where we both you know it's easy to get g'd up in one meeting oh, but how do you follow through you know that's it and that's the biggest central part of it falling through they weren't yes. here they weren't here yeah for three k a, yeah, a month, you better be here at least once a week. That's it. That's at, it. Least. at least, at least, right? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm thinking if even if one person handled five accounts. Yeah. Yeah. Three k a month. Mm. That's twenty one k a month. That's a lot. You can divide your time at yeah. each of those places for one day. For one day. Surely. That's it. Exactly. And that's still killing yeah. it. Yeah. 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 But and that, that's, that's why I believe in like setting, setting people up to succeed. succeed. You, you know, know that's. that's the, the biggest, biggest thing as, as well that's, that's um you yeah, know that, that i've learned the past couple of months even like even through going through like shoots that were bad and working models that are really really bad like i want them to succeed so i want them to set i want to set them up to succeed how do i do that i you know envision the shots beforehand i give them inspo i suss out the location myself like for instance when i first came to fitness studio i had a look at the location and i thought to myself yeah the first level is okay not enough lighting when i went upstairs holy freaking moly the lighting, insane. I was like, Albert, why are you holding back on me on this? Why, you should have told me about this location. We were like glass panels on like both sides. Yeah, it's insane. And then, you, and then when you showed me the balcony, woo, 
the ideas started flowing out of nowhere and i was just telling to albert yo we need to shoot here often like we need to do this now um but yeah it's you know location is really important and you know because i set myself to succeed with no bail and their models you know that what's the biggest thing that's been people been telling me like the videos are insane but like because i pre-planned beforehand so i knew the transitions i wanted and i was telling madeline you know hey we should do like an eye transition you know we should do something really interesting just to get people's attention and it worked so it was like cool let's yeah like let's work nearly nearly every single person that i showed the video to they noticed yeah they yeah. that's the the moment that they looked the at yeah you know that's huge. and you know like like, like i said like talking back about the uh, videography videography industry more i wish there were more videographers to be honest i wish there were more because at the moment there's a lot of photographers and this is part of the reason why i don't like photography and why i choose to step away from it but if i need to do it, i will but i don't completely bash on photography it's just like there's too many of them really there's, there's too, too many, many of them really like, Alan, there's way too many photographers out wow. there and it's there's a saturated market isn't it yeah well but they're all killing it aren't they? they're all killing it they're all killing it in some form form and shape in their own like locations yeah yeah but there's going to be one like oh he's a god tier photographer I, he or she's a god tier photographer i need to hire that person but like if you have other amateur photographers who are trying to make it but they're not ruling it for the big uh, mm. hires they're just like they're just not putting themselves um, in a situation to succeed better mm. which means they're not creating a theme properly they're not editing their photos properly oh actually now that i think about it i remember i um did some unedited photos and i sent them off to an editor and he went into lightroom and did it in all in five minutes 112 photos he did in five minutes just like slapped on slapped on a filter slapped on your change this settings is that i'm like what the heck we just paid this guy x amount to just edit something in five minutes that's ridiculous and meanwhile the effort that I've been putting lately, because I use Photoshop, um, I was doing 25 photos. It took me literally six hours because yeah. I was working with every fine yeah. detail yeah. You know, within, within the background. I mean, look, I tell you what, people like you are a rarity because I've worked <laughs> with a lot of people. Yeah. And um, yeah, normally people will definitely overcharge what they're yeah. worth. Yeah. And if it's good enough work, then, it, you know, it's, it's, it works. It for works. Them. It works for them. But for people like you, mm seriously like you're going to get to the point where um i'm pretty sure you're going to be you're going to have to charge a lot yeah yeah because of the way you work yeah well you know no, you're right like i think i'm lucky now that i've caught you at a transitional period where <laughs> you're like you're I'm so doing. hungry yeah. and you're so yeah dedicated to like yeah. honing your craft yeah i'm passionate i think you're going to get to the point where you're going to have your system and but here's the thing i think you need to be careful not to lose that passion oh, and become yeah. like a systematic just yeah. money churning yeah no, no um, you know you know the, the thing, thing about, about that like and i explained to you on um, some people that have met me i've told them hey i'm always on this program or i'm always doing on this website looking at new transitions new motion graphics new um you know filters everything that's different everything that i've learned i'm keeping up to date with train because i'm scared honestly alan i'm really scared that my content might get too bland honestly i'm really scared about it and what i mean by bland is that it gets getting really uh, repetitive mm. and it's the same shit over and over again but for me i'm always keeping up to date with trends and like i said um if i need to switch something up it'll happen I will, i'll notice it because like, like I, I said, said when I was doing, doing you know the flat <laughs> and it's a very popular transition with Final Cut, it's called the um, flash with the motion blow um, effect where you do flash blow, flash blow. Yep. Everyone, Everyone knows that I used to do that a lot and I caught on it too, like this is very, very you know repetitive. So I swayed away from that and I got into that zoom transition. Now everything just zooms in. Everyone's been loving that. It's been juicy. It's a juicy transition and you know, I I still do that in some selections. If, for instance, if I'm shooting fast object and then going to a close mode, I will do that purpose zoom transition. But yeah, I always try to update because I'm really scared I'll go, go land. Or if I go 4K, then you know, sky's the limit. <laughs> sky's the limit. But um, yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to know what program I do use, I use Final Cut Pro. But I am um, I am kind of amateur with Adobe Premiere as well. But majority, if I want my fast work done, I'll do Final Cut. Um, and I feel so like it's faster. Yeah, it's, so it's much more faster, to be honest. Um, I know people have transitioned from Premiere Pro to Final Cut because it's faster. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I find it's just the way 
it works is just easier. Yeah. <laughs> like with Adobe, you can get to these crazy tiny increments and everything looks yeah, really messy. Yeah, and yeah, 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 right. like your perception of what's happening <laughs> and piecing together the puzzle, yeah, it's yeah. that much harder. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's also the stem from that, the After Effects program as well, where you do all your transitions and all this, that. But like, because they're like in a relationship with each other, you've got to go by two programs. Mm. So it's very insane with the workflow. So our workflow wise and speed wise, I prefer Final Cut Pro with my clients that I've asked that have asked me to work. So yeah, I mean, my biggest project was uh, the very up to date, the biggest project since this one that I've done recently is probably one fitness first yeah. when I did um, just the carousel ads um, on the Facebook. I did that. That was the biggest one that I've ever done um, in the past three months. But other than that, no, no other, no other big project except this one today. And was that a local or? A uh, it was actually uh, for the entirety of Fitness First. Wow. Yeah, so it was a very, very big project. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's insane. <laughs> and knowing that, like them, they Fitness First in, in general, they're they're international. Mm. You know, they're also big in China as well. Mm. What I've noticed, and um, you know, aspirations for this place. I hope this place expands as well. You know, but as far as um, you know, carousel ads go, and you know, these forty-five, thirty to forty-five second ads. They can take a long time with edits. Yeah. They can take a very long time. Um, but yeah, time is money. So that's why I choose Final Cut Pro. Maybe you have awesome. to create a carousel ad for us. Yeah, I'll we'll make a carousel ad for sure. We'll feature Alan and myself. Myself doing uh, the spotting and that's it. But yeah, no, enough for me, man. Like that's that's all about me at the moment. But Alan, who are you? And why? What possessed your mind to do this podcast? Like, why? And why me? No, no, just why. Why are you, Alan? Let's, uh, you're, let's, abs- you're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Why? You're absolutely right. Um, I didn't dare for a long time. Yeah. I wanted for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know it, but I was studying for a long time. Yeah. Just devouring podcasts, devouring like whatever just constantly training, learning, meeting people and running a business and, um, you know, everything that you learn from that. Yeah. But uh, my background is I was very late to fitness. Very late. I had not touched a gym. Well, sorry, I hadn't done anything athletic till I was 18. Oof. Um, so, yeah, I was, you know. Wait, so were you like... Uh, like an oversized kind of person no or? I was gaunt I was like a skeleton oh really okay. yeah okay. skeleton with hair down my back <laughs> yeah it was it was ridiculous yeah wow and I thought I was like God's gift yeah. you know <laughs> but um, my sister she you know two years in a row she she saw my descend into yeah. like this world of partying and drugs and you know yeah. like just I was the rock and roll star that didn't know how to play music oh. You know, yeah, and um, everything matched. Like I, my attitude matched. Mm. You know, everything. I was very rude. I was yeah. snappy. I was, you know, I was lost. I was completely yeah. lost, yeah. and I could, I did, couldn't find um, happiness or meaningful anything in school. Right, right, right. right. Except for the girls in school. <laughs> so I found mates. I found brothers. Mm. I found, you know. Um, people that looked after each other yeah, and yeah. learn, you know, like a very important aspect of how to treat people. Yeah. And, you know, I was exposed to a lot of people that, you know, we would call them dogs, oh, okay. you know, on the street, you'd call them like, you know, dogs, people that backstab, you wow. know, that yeah. don't look after other people, yeah. people that, um, you know, like right now you'd, call in business people like dogs, dogs you yeah, know, like similar yeah. it's the same thing yeah that's right it's the same sort of thing that's right. and eventually you weed out the dogs and you learn how to surround yourself with the people that you look after and they yeah. look after you yeah yeah and you know that taught me a huge thing wow so then back to my sister she convinced me mm-hmm. i look horrible and i'm probably going to die soon so <laughs> you know come and try rowing with her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, number one, join a team yeah. that is ridiculous and like douchey and that's not me. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, like the truth is 
I think it scared the shit out of me. Yeah. To be surrounded by people that were probably fitter than me and smarter than me yeah. and had more money and, yeah. and all that, you know. Yeah, I definitely, yeah. I never, so, I never but feel 100%. at the same time, like I looked in the mirror, I go, you know what? It's one of those all in situations. You've got to go with it. Uh, that's it. Yeah, wow. And I went with it. 10 years later, I was like a national rowing champion, had oh, like really? world medals, oh, um, represented that. Australia, state titles, national titles. Wow. And um, in dragon boat rowing. Dragon boat rowing. Not skull rowing. Yeah. Too short for that. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good though, like yeah, that yeah. would have made the Olympics then. Wow. But no. Insane. Insane. <laughs> but yeah, so rowing changed my life. My yeah, sister wow. changed my life. My attitude, my perception, like I built health like wise as well, yeah. health wise, yeah. built a good work ethic, yeah. teamwork, being around like, you know, positive people and you That's know. It, yeah, yeah. So I you know, I got I got a good lesson from, you know, playing on the street. Mm -hmm. Got a good lesson from being in a sport, a team yeah. sport. Yeah. And then after that, you know what? I'm an I'm an active person. I'm yeah. a, I'm an athlete. Yeah. Through and through. It makes me feel good. Yeah. It's the best release ever. It's, you know, how you figure out a lot of your demons. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just sure. by pushing and, mm -hmm. and working through, you know, a, a hard workout. Yeah. It's, you know. Would, would you have, have figured, figured out rowing eventually? Or was it, like, even without your sister, would you have figured it out that you would be doing rowing? Hard to say. That's hard to say, yeah. Because, like, people have told me that what if you didn't actually pick up the DSLR camera what would you be doing now I'll be like, you may have picked up a chef's knife and <laughs> you may have been like a chef that's smoking cigarettes and hating life yeah well, seriously no no no, no and, I, and I agree like if she didn't um, put me through rowing yeah then I may have um, I don't know become uh, a boxer wow and then got the shit knocked out of me you know like <laughs> retired after one fight yeah, yeah. Well, like yeah you just don't know yeah no, it's insane. But so that's that's what makes me, you know, who I am. Yeah, right. And right then up. when I finished rowing, yeah, I found the gym, mm. and for two years just hated bodybuilding. Yeah. And then. But you did do it though, right? Did yeah, do it. Did hated it, but. Like, what do you hate about it? Like, just out of curiosity, what do you hate about it? Just the amount of sets and reps that Rep, you have to yeah. do. Yeah. And like to start. Yeah. Because I was a rower. Yeah. That didn't handle any weight. Yeah. Then to like every day trying to push weights. Right. It's, yeah. To, get, to yeah, become a good, yeah. to become a good bodybuilder, I think you need to like put in like years and yeah. years and years yeah. and years and years. No, yeah. So now I enjoy bodybuilding, which is the weird thing. Wow. I enjoy, like, yeah. I'm, my body's actually strong enough to, like, you know, handle yeah. reps and, yeah, and, no. and heavy well, weight. What did you hit recently? 120 for six? For six. Wow, insane. On the bench. And how Which, much do you weigh? Like, 87 kilos. Oh, that's pretty good. Wow. So, yeah. Insane. But no, um, after bodybuilding, found CrossFit. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Guess, guess yeah. what? That's, yeah. that's rowing. Yeah. That's pushing yourself. Because it is that team aspect as well. Team aspect. Yeah. You know, you're suffering with people around you. Yeah. You're, um, you can hurt yourself yeah. at any moment. So that's a challenging thing in itself. Mm. Knowing when to slow down. Knowing how to pace yourself. Yeah. You know, learning every one of the freaking domains that are in CrossFit. Yeah. Athletic domains. You know, it's, it is, I'm not an elite but yeah. it is a very high level of fitness. Right. You know? Right. It works. Yeah. It freaking works. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. No, so, I agree because like my heart rate was pounding in seven of the class. But um, have you ever competed in CrossFit Games at, at all? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done team events. Yeah, yeah, cool. I love team events. Um, I'm, I don't like, I don't think I'm good enough for um, individual. individual. Yeah. Just because, you know, if you've got three heats, yeah. at a certain comp I'm not going to sit there by myself and oh, no, like no. suffer through that I need my team with me yeah, you yeah, know 100%. I'm just not that strong yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. but CrossFit the way I use it now is I love Olympic weightlifting mm. so snatch snatch is yeah Clean and jerk, not so much. I need to work on that, but yeah. I've really been focusing on my, my snatch. It's very technical movement. Yeah, and I think my snatch is looking, you know, the best it's ever been. Yeah. And 
you know, you need a you need to be really strong overhead mm. to to have a good snatch. Yeah. You need a super strong core. Yeah. To have a good, you need coordination. Coordination as well. That's huge. Right. You need balance. Yeah. You need like the best hips. Yeah. Because you need to, you need to catch the snatch low. Mm. You need a strong squat. Yeah. So, if you're good at the snatch, you're pretty much going to be good at yeah. most, most athletic, things. you know, things endeavors. Yeah. So, I've made sure that I'm good at that. Mm. Now that's my priority at the moment, but. I'll do CrossFit once or twice a week, yeah. just to test myself, yeah, just yeah, to stay yeah. fit, just yeah. to keep myself, you know, in the loop. Mm. And that's how I use CrossFit as like a gauge of yeah. where I am, how I'm feeling with my fitness and strength right. And, right. and all that. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I wouldn't use it every day, <laughs> yeah. but you know, depending on your goals, yeah. it's it's a, it's an awesome way of training. Right. Yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome. Man. So, if everybody um is wondering, this is a very interesting combination we have here, <laughs> like two people that are creating a podcast from yeah. very different um areas of life and world life. and industry yeah. and yeah, our industry as well. Yeah. But here's the thing: we both love fitness yeah. and being healthy and strong. That's right. Yeah. And I love art and creative. <laughs> you know, so I think that's where that that chemistry good science, chemistry yeah. Yeah. happens yeah. and will happen. It will happen yeah. Okay, yeah. So when I imagine saying push to shove, it's how you deal with energy. Yeah. Right. And why that's important is when push comes to shove, how do you deal with it? Mm. Do you deal with it in a combative way? Do you deal with it with the same level of energy? You know, have you prepared yourself mentally and physically to deal with that push? Do you even just absorb the push and help that person because you've seen that this person needs help, right? So then the people that we bring on board have been pushed and shoved yeah. in work and life yeah. and challenges yeah. and in their endeavors and what they're trying to create. Sick. Yeah, so. Brother, I'm fucking so excited to like <laughs> see what happens next. Wait, should we wrap it up now? We should because I've got a massage. Oh yeah, cool. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. so yeah, thanks for listening to the podcast, guys. My name is, once again is Jay Cray and we have Alan here. So peace out, guys. Take yeah. care. Peace, go get fat. Bill, number one, bitch, I bet it well. Do the numbers, I said it well. I played the game and I'm still the same and I never change just to get a deal, but I'm ballin'. I came from nothing, it's nothing like it's nothing. Yeah.